So good morning. We will now start. And uh, before we proceed, uh, let me review a little bit uh, some notions that we studied last week uh, because uh, I proposed a simple problem and we can speak about it in a moment. So uh, we were speaking about models and one important model is the uh, difference equation. So you have in this slide, sorry, you have in this slide um, uh, an example of one of the standard forms of a difference equation. So U is the input to the system, Y is the output, and K is discrete time, so K is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The A's and the B's are coefficients, and M, N, and the M are constants. So what do, do we have here? We have a relationship between different samples, consecutive samples of the output, and consecutive samples of the input. And basically, you can say that uh, the output at time k plus n, where k is changing, i, plus a linear combination of the previous samples of u. And we, uh, we have come to some, define some notions. One of the notion was uh, the system delay, which is the difference between n and m. And the system delay uh, tells you, when you change u, what is the first sample that is affected by this change in u. And uh, then I introduced the forward shift operator Q. So uh, you can write Y of K plus N as the sequence up to N. So, and I told that you can use this uh, operator as if it was a variable. Although you should bear in mind that it is an operator. So you can write the difference equation in this way. It's QN, YK, Y of K plus N minus one is just uh, Y of K advanced by Q up to n minus one and so on. And if you uh, proceed in an algebraic way as if Q was uh, a variable, you do some algebra and you solve it to, with respect to Y, K and you get this expression, okay? And this is the so-called uh, system operator or impulse system operator. Actually, it is a way of codifying the coefficients that define the system. And these coefficients are the A's, the B's, and N and M. And uh, we also have the transfer function, the digital transfer function. You just replace Q by the complex variable Z and Y of K by the Z transform of Y, U of K by the Z transform of U, and you get the transfer function. Now, one funny thing is that you have uh, order M polynomial divided by uh, another N polynomial. So we have M zeros and N poles because the zeros are the coefficients of the numerator and the poles are the coefficients of the denominator. And in the discrete time, what this tells you, if you write the transfer function, is that the difference between poles and zeros uh, is nothing more than the delay. So you can give um, a sense, an immediate sense, to this difference between uh, poles and zeros, the excess pole zero. Things. This way is quite useful to um, study stability because stability depends on the poles, that is to say, the roots of the denominator. You replace Q by Z and you solve the equation, which is the denominator equal to zero. And uh, all the poles must be inside in circle. Okay, so it's quite simple, quite simple to study stability with this representation. And then I said, okay, we can introduce the backward shift operator and we delay the difference equation by n step of k and all the other samples are delayed by n steps. So we get this. And if you uh, apply the backward shift operator, operator atraso, q minus one, and q minus one is such that you, uh, if you have y of k minus n, then you apply q minus n, that is to say you apply n times q minus one, and, uh, okay. and again, you can have this system operator that actually maps the transfer function, but now written in terms of the backward operator q minus one. If you write the transfer function, it would be in terms of z minus one, the inverse of the z variable, the complex z variable. But, um, and these polynomials start with a constant, you see, B0, uh, which is some constant in the, for the numerator, and one for the denominator, because you, here you have Y of K, so it's multiplied by one. But then you have another term, which is Q minus D, which is Q minus the excess of pole zeros. D, remember, is N minus N. And this is something, some, is some algebra that we have seen. Now, I suggest you, I suggest you to, uh, another notion, 
was the reciprocal polynomial. We say that uh, A star of Q minus A Q. Okay? And this is valid for any polynomial. So uh, one interesting thing is that you can write the equations in terms of the Q minus one uh, operator as the ratio of reciprocal polynomials of A and B, the A and B that appear in the forward shift operator. And, but then we have this other term, Q minus D. So when you are working with a backward shift operator, you have also to this extra term, which depends on the delay. This was something that we have reviewed. And uh, then I had, this, uh, I had this exercise and I asked you to explain uh, the solution of this exercise. Simo, you were saying something? No volunteers? Okay, I did my homework. Probably some of you did, but let me show mine. You are too shy, so we can run out. Okay, so we have a first, first order difference equation. Why first order? Because the term of Y which is most advanced is Y of K plus one, and the one with the term with uh, the smallest uh, relative advancement between the most advanced y and the least advanced y is just one, okay? So uh, this is a first order equation. Now, if you want to write this in the form with delayed variables, you just delay everything by the order. So the order is one and you delay, you replace k by k minus one. So you get here yk, here minus 1.5 yk minus one, and UK minus one. I mean, it's, it's quite obvious. You just delay, replace K by K, K minus one, okay? Now, if you apply, for instance, the Z transform with zero initial conditions, and you apply the Z transform to the Z transform of Y, the term represented by capital Y, minus 0.5, the Z transform of Y equal to the Z transform of U. Then I solve it with respect to Y, and I get the transfer function in Z, okay? If I replace Z by Q, okay, that's the, system operator, one divided by Q minus 0.5. Now, if I consider the other expression in uh, delayed variables, then what do I have? M of Y minus 0.5, Z transform of Y of K minus one, which is Z minus one times the Z transform of Y, and the Z transform of U K minus one, which is Z minus one times the Z transform of U. Now I solve it with respect to Y, and I get this expression. The idea is that you always start this numerator polynomial with a constant. In this case, actually, it's just one term. So you push the power of C to the delay and then get B, which is just equal to, to one. B, B, B star, the reciprocal of B. Let's see, let's look at the other example, which is a little bit more interesting. Second order system. So this is the forward equation that I wrote. And uh, now we have, here y of k plus two, and here we have y of two, because this is the most advanced term with respect to y of k. And uh, if you delay everything by two, if you delay everything by two, then you get y of k, two y of k plus one minus two, which is y of k minus one, then you have three y of k minus two, and it's the same thing for you, okay? Now, if you apply the Z transform for the first equation, so, the first and the second are equivalent. It's just a matter of convenience. Now, apply the Z-transform to the first equation. So you have the Z-transform of Y of K plus two, that's with zero initial conditions, don't forget that. That's Z squared Y, capital Y, which is the Z-transform of Y and so on, okay? So uh, Y is equal to Z plus four divided by Z squared plus two Z plus three times U. So this is the transfer function, the digital transfer function, okay? Now, you can also pick up. You can also pick up the. You can also pick up the uh, equation, the difference equation, the delay form. Now, where you have delays, you have powers of z minus one when you apply z transform, and this equation ma is mapped into this form. Okay. Now you write the solution of y in terms of u in this form, where you have here a polynomial that starts. This is b zero, be a constant, and you have here the delay, and the delay is one. Now, if you look at the if you look at the difference equation, the most advanced y is y of k plus two. The most advanced u is u of k plus one. So you have a delay of one, which is the difference between both advancements. Okay, and here you have z minus one, which is z minus the delay. That's are 
what I called uh, grocery bookkeeping, contest Mercier, deliver Mercier, okay? But you must be able to do it. And the best thing is that you do a couple of examples. There are some exercises and, uh, proposed in the series. Um, and this, is, this will be important. It's a very simple thing, but it will be important uh, later on when we when our prediction in color, uh, uh, controllers and controller design and so on. Any questions? No? Okay. So let me, let's see another thing. So up to now we have been seeing input output models, but uh, you probably know that we have another type of models in which we have some internal variables. This is the state model. So uh, let me give you an example. Start by considering, uh, considering one example in which we have a population model. The population can be uh, birds or fish or uh, washing machines. So you have consider the set of washing machines in Lisbon, conjunto das máquinas de lavar em Lisboa, and uh, uh, you can consider uh, brand new machines. Okay, so zero years old. They are in the first year, so they have zero years. So then uh, machines that have completed one year, the machines that have completed two years, and so on. So we have factor that depends on time, okay? okay? And this factor has entries, and entry i that I represent as xi is the number of individuals in each range i at time k, okay? So i is 0, 1, 2 up to some maximum value n, and the discrete time is 0, 1, 2 in some mile, okay? So what equation can I write for this variable x of i. It's very simple because uh, suppose that there are no deaths. This means that all the washing machines in one year pass to the next year. They are not uh, uh, sent to, to garbage because they are no one pass on per one skip, no one machine is the for them. So what you say is that uh, when you, one year passes, machines with i years now became at the next year k plus one they became older one year so they passed to the level i plus one so you can write this equation here x of i plus one at time k plus one is x of i at time k okay and you can write i equal to zero one two up to n minus one because when i is n minus one you have x of n okay? now uh, if you want to see it uh, in a plot you can uh, have the x2 x3 just to give an example uh, with four levels. And this is time along the horizontal. So you start with a number of washing machines with uh, zero years. So there were no washing machines in Lisbon and you for the first time uh, bought a number of washing machines. Now, after one year, the washing machines that had uh, zero years, after one year they became one year old. After another year they became two years old and so on. So you have this progression here. Okay? And you are assuming that you are not buying any new machine, so nothing is entering here. Okay? Now, suppose that uh, some of the washing machines uh, do not work anymore. So in passing from one year to the next year, some of the washing machines, they have to be thrown away because they don't work anymore. So uh, at time k plus one, the number of washing machines with i plus one years are not all of the washing machines with i years at time k, but you must multiply by a number between zero and one, okay? If this beta i is one, otherwise only a fraction of it passed. So this is a, a mortality coefficient, okay? Now, washing machines do not reproduce, but suppose that you are thinking about fish or birds in a given uh, region. So what about x zero? x zero, x zero at time k plus one can be supposedly given by a contribution of x0 of k, x1 of k, and so on. So the off number of uh, uh, individuals that exist in the different uh, sections or cohorts, okay? We use the term cohort that comes from the, the Romans. The Romans had the legions divided in cohorts. Uh, so we have this model divided in cohorts. Each cohort corresponds to a set of uh, individuals with the same age. So eventually, some of these alpha are zero. For instance, uh, alpha zero can be zero. Uh, individuals do not reproduce. So you end up, you end up with uh, a model of this type. So you have the vector x. You have the vector x at uh, uh, which 
which is made of uh, x of zero, so the number of individuals with zero years of life at time k, x1, the number of individuals with one year. Of you write those equations, and if you group together everything in a, in a matricial form, you can compute the vector x at time k plus one. So in a compact way, this matrix here, made of alphas and betas, you call it A. So you are multiplying uh, the state at time k times a matrix A, this matrix, to get x at time k plus one, okay? I said the state. The state is a set of variables such that if you know them at one time instant, you can compute what happens in the future, provided that you know how the system is excited. Now, this system is not excited. Is, is a system that starts with some initial condition for x and then evolves by instant, okay? And it's clear that if you do this operation, multiplication by a, you can compute future states, okay? So x is actually a state. If you think of a variable, say, just x0, x0 is not a state because you need to know uh, the values of compute the same values at time k plus one, okay? So a state is a set of variables such that if you know them at one time instant, then you can compute future values of that uh, set of variables. Okay? Ustad, I, will, I will repeat this in Portuguese because it's quite important that you have this notion. Uh, o estado do sistema, essas variáveis num determinado instante, podemos calcular as variáveis em todos os instantes futuros, se soubermos a excitação do sistema. Neste exemplo, não há excitação. Portanto, uh, é apenas multiplicar por A. E claramente podemos calcular os futuros estados multiplicando sucessivamente por A, ok? You multiply by x, you multiply again by A, so you have A squared times xk gives you x of k plus 2 and so on, ok? In this way you can do predictions. Ok, any question? This is just one example. This is not a, an applied example, but uh, just to uh, show you that uh, these things are... Uh, can be applied in practice. That, that's not the idea here. But uh, just to, to give you an example of this so-called cohort population model, you can see uh, the mackerel, uh, the captures of mackerel in the North Sea between 1910 and 1914. Uh, and you can see that in uh, 1910, you had a very large number of offsprings. And if you look, go along this line, uh, you had no mackerel, no elder mackerels, okay? Now, in 1911, there were a number of mackerels of order of H0, and then the previous spike, which is this one, propagated to now to cohort number one. So some of the mackerels died or were captured or so on, okay? And uh, now, in the, in the successive year, you had a small number of mackerels, and this, Initial number of mackerels in 1911 propagated to 1912, but now in cohort to having one year. And this other, which is even larger, propagated to cohort number two with some attenuation and so on. Okay? So you can see here an example in which you could, uh, what are the alphas and betas okay, in this, in this uh, uh, model. So the betas are related to the mortality coefficient, so it's the attenuation when you go along these diagonals. They, they attenuate very little, okay? So the betas are quite close to one. And the alphas is the relationship, assuming that you have no immigration. The alphas are related to the way the different stack, uh, cohorts of population uh, produce the newborn. Okay, later we are going to speak about system identification. That is to say, you look at the output and the input and you estimate the parameters. For the moment, this is just one example. Any question? Okay, let me show you another example, or let me show you another example. And this is quite different, okay? That's the, usually you think of models of something physical or logical. This is an informatic system. So actually it's a server, a computer server, okay? So a computer server is a, a software program that uh, allows you to uh, distribute messages a number of other computers. Well, your server, and this server uh, receives messages from you and sends messages to you. And uh, uh, the server can be seen as a dynamic system. Okay? We have a number of uh, manipulated variables. These manipulated variables are actually parameters that you can configure. But you can 
treat them as manipulated variables, control variable. And these inputs are max clients and keep alive. What are these things? Max clients is the number of the maximum number of computers to which the server to a connection to a to a to a server. Then you suppose that you send a message. Your computer sends a message to the server. Then the server says, well, this guy is trying to communicate with me. So we send you a message. There is a high probability that he will send you another message that I have to handle. So uh, it keeps you alive. It keeps a attention and period. Okay? And you can, if you are a manager of the server, you can configure this. Okay? Now, instead of saying this is a static variable that I say has one number, you can treat this as uh, a dynamical system in which these two variables, MC and KA, are variables that you can manipulate so that the server maximizes, for instance, the number of messages per unit time that it, it delivers. Now, the outputs of the server are the occupation of the CPU and the occupation of memory. Okay? And this is changing. And this is changing in time. And the changes depend on your choices for these input variables. Now, we would like to, we have some inputs, MC and KA, actually two, and you have two outputs, CPU and MAM, okay? Uh, so I can treat this as a system. What is the dynamic of the system? If you have an electrical system, you can write the Kirchhoff laws uh, and the, the equations for the characteristics of a capacitor and the resistor and so on. If you have a mechanical system, then you can write Newton law, okay? Relating forces to acceleration laws. So one possibility is to relate these variables uh, based on data. So you observe a record of data for the input and the record of data for the output, okay? And uh, now you try to relate them as a memory. Now, uh, suppose that we have some average val value. So this Ka med means the average of Ka and, uh, and the same thing for uh, MC, CP. And you want to relate the increments with respect to these average values. Okay? You have observed, you know, more or less than the average values, so you subtract them from your signals. And in this way, you, you end up with signals that can be either positive or negative, which is a good thing. So for instance, uh, you have U1, that's one of the inputs, is the DV minus the average value of keep alive. And the same for the others one, for the other ones. Okay? Now, you uh, observe y, U1, U2, Y1, Y2, you have a record of, of numbers. And using methods that we are going later to study, although you see, so uh, the axis, we have these state variables, x at time k plus one. We are not relating directly u to y. We are relating u to y uh, via or through these variables x1 and x2. So you propagate x1 and x2 in this way here, you see. x1 and x2 at time k plus one, it's a matrix. Where do these numbers come from? Come from, you estimate these numbers from input-output data in a way that later we will see how, how we can produce state plus, and then we have a matrix times the vector of manipulated variables. Again, these numbers come uh, estimated from them. Okay? And then you say, well, well uh, but what I want is to express uh, Y1 and Y2, which is the incremental values of CPU usage and memory usage in uh, the state such that Y1 is X1 and Y2 is X2 because this matrix is the, uh, there. Okay? So you end up with something which is X of K plus one is equal to A, a matrix, times XK, plus another matrix, I call it B, times the vector of manipulated variables at time K. And then we have an output example. Now, in general, you can think of this type of models of this type. So X of K plus one is equal to A of X of K plus B U of K. And Y of K is C X of K plus, well, this thing never appeared, but you can, uh, sometimes you must think about it. It's very rare because uh, when this D is not different from K, instantaneous action between the input and the output. UK instantaneously affects Y of K, okay? So usually it takes some time for the input to take effect on the system. So D is usually zero. Okay? In, many in many cases, I don't like write it down, but there are some examples in which D must be there. So we put it because actually this satisfies the superposition principle and so on. And the, this, this um, type of models are interesting because you can easily generalize it to non-linear case. 
in a linear case you cannot you can no longer live with things like uh, digital transfer functions because digital transfer functions are only defined for linear systems linear time invariant systems now uh, if you have a nonlinearity, you can use this type of model. So instead of having a linear form of x and u, you have a nonlinear function of x state. So uh, again, instead of having a linear dependence of y k on the state and of the input, you have a nonlinear function of the state, perhaps also of input if you have the, uh, the input. Okay. Now uh, we are going to say something more in this course about linear state models. Any question? Okay. So. We have two languages, Portuguese and French. Now, if you say something in Portuguese, you would like to have uh, to be able to say the same thing in French and vice versa. If you say something in French, French, you would like to say the same thing in Portuguese. Okay, so models are like languages. You are expressing the dynamics in a model. And we have two types of models presented by different situations or let's let's uh, Restrain ourselves to uh, the let's restrain ourselves to the linear case. So uh, you can represent linear models input output by transfer function or different equation. But then you we have this other story of the state model. Okay. So if I give you the model in one form, how is the model in the other form? Sometimes this is useful. Actually, in your laboratory work, you are starting. You are going to start by estimating the parameters for an input of the state model because the state model is the form that you are going to use to design the controller okay so you have to transform things uh, how can this be um, done? when we, when will it be the uh, suppose the that we have a state model so i give you a state model x of k plus one equals to a of x of k plus b u and uh, now i'm assuming that i also have uh, i didn't write it here but uh, assume that we have the output equation y of k is equal to c x of k. How can I obtain the transfer function, which is an input output model? Well, apply the Z transform with zero initial conditions. Okay. Remember that I told you one way of answering a question is if I ask, okay, if I ask you, is scables a blue? You, you think about the definitions of scables, it probably it gives you, it tells you this definition tells you whether scables is blue or not. Now, uh, what is the definition of transfer function? Is the quotient of the Laplace of the Z-transform by the Z-transform of the input with zero initial condition. So we apply to the state equation the Z-transform and X of K plus one is nothing more than Z X of Z, okay? And then uh, the Z-transform of AX plus BU, the Z-transform is linear, so this is nothing more than A Z-transform of X plus B Z-transform of B, okay? Now with some algebra, I collect the terms in X here, so zx equals to ax is the same as zi minus ax. Remember the i matrix, okay? So zi minus ax is equal to bu. Then I multiply on the left by zi minus a, okay? And then y is cx of z because yk is cx of k, and x of z is given by this expression. So y of z is this stuff here, c z zi mi, minus a inverse b times u of z. So the transfer function, which is a quotient of y of z by u of z, okay? I'm considering uh, scalar systems. Uh, it's nothing more than c, zi, zi minus a. Minus. Uh, remember that once you have the transfer function, you can uh, say, whenever I have a z in time, in time this is a forward shift of y and or, or of u, uh, so I can transform this to the difference equation very easily, okay? So in this slide, you can see in this slide, you can see how, if I give you a state model, how you can obtain the transfer function. Okay? Now, let's consider the uh, opposite or converse problem. Suppose that I give you the transfer function, how can you obtain a state model? Actually, there is, the answer is not unique in this case. So if I give you a state model, there is only one transfer function that matches that state model. But we're all uh, state models. Let's see one solution. All the solutions are related by multiplying by a matrix, which is invertible. Okay, let's forget a little bit about that. Now, I'm going to start by considering the problem first for systems without zeros, and then I will do the necessary changes to solve the problem. Instead of the numerator being just a constant, you have some polynomial here. So, for the moment, suppose that you just have a constant here, and be zero. Now, what you do, you start by building the difference equation. 
So you know that y of z is g of z u of z. So by simple algebra, by simple algebra, you write a different equation. Is this is this clear to every well all of you? Yep. Andre, you were saying something? No, I was saying yeah, it was clear. If if it is not clear, you can ask in Portuguese. Okay. So I assume that you understand very that this situation passing from here to here is very simple. You can do it easily. Okay. Just algebra. And uh, uh, when you have y of z, uh, you get y of k. When you have, for instance, z up to third of y of z, you get y of k plus three. So remember that multiplying by z shell conditions to forward shift y of k. Okay, now we have the different situation. Now, one way of uh, defining the state is looking at what is the order? What is the order of this system? This system has order three because the degree of the polynomial is three. If you look at the advances, you have the most advanced uh, sample of y is k plus three and the least advanced is at time k. So you have an advancement, uh, difference in advancements of three. So this is, this is a system of order three. So you can look at the uh, transfer file. So if you have a system of order three, you need three state variables. In general, in general, uh, if you have a system of order n, you need n state variables. Now, you take as the, uh, according to this approach to get the state, you, you take as the state the output and the first n minus one forward shifts. Okay, so in this case n is equal to three. So you take uh, y of k as a state, n is three, so n minus one is two. So you take, you take as state variables the shifts of y up to order n minus one, which is k plus two. Okay, so your x1 of k is y k, x2 of k is y of k plus one, and x3 of k is y of k plus two. Now, let's start writing the equations for the state. You state that time k plus one with the state that time k. Uh, so, x1 of k plus one is the definition of state, is y of k plus one, is that definition here. But y of k plus one, again, by definition, is x2 of k. So, x1 of k plus one, is x2 of k, so you are expressing x1 at time k plus one in terms of the state at time k. In this case, it depends only on the second variable. Now, do the same for x2. x2 of k plus one, x2 of k plus one is y of k plus two. But y of k plus two is x3. We have already two equations. Now, what about the equation for x3 of k plus one? If you apply the same technique, this gives you y of k plus three. And, uh, here you can no longer use the definition, but you have an equation for y of k plus three, okay? And the equation is the original difference equation, y of k plus three in this way. Now, y of k plus two here, look, is nothing more than by definition, y of k plus two is x three of k. And this is x two of k, and this is x one of k, okay? So you can write this last equation here. So uh, let's recall what is the procedure. If you have a system of order n, you take as state variables the output and it's n minus one first shifts. Then for the first n minus one variables, you just apply this definition. And for the last variable, you apply the difference equation, okay? So we have as equations, this one here, this one here, and this last one here. Let's write it again, okay? So you can write this in matrix form. If you write these equations in matrix form, so you collect x1 of k plus one, x2 of k plus one, and x3 of k plus one in a vector, that's a state vector. Then you go times x1 plus one times x2, that's x2, plus zero times x3, plus zero times uk, okay? And so on. So this is nothing more than a matrix representation, a matrix representation of, uh, a matrix representation of this equation. And then y of k, well, by definition, y of k is x1 of k, remember. We selected x1 of k to be y of k. So this is just one zero zero times the state. And you have here the matrix A, matrix B, and matrix C, and no D at all. Any question? No. Suppose that we have systems with zeros. And uh, you can block, you can uh, factorize the system as two systems in series. Okay. Now uh, we have a system without zeros where you put here on on the numerator just one constant can be one. And here you have a system with zeros. This system is not causal. Why is it not causal? 
B0 is equal to plus B1. A system just with zeros. Can someone tell me? The delay is negative. Afonso wanted yeah. to say something? Please, Afonso. You are raising your hand? Uh, no, it's me, Professor. No? I, professor, I think you're... I see you. Can someone tell me why this system is not causal? A system with just zeros. You, do you remember what is the delay? How can you compute the delay in terms of the number of poles and number of zeros? You remember? N minus M. He can hear us, so. Remember that the delay is the number of poles minus the number of zeros. So what is the number of poles in just this part here? You, we have no poles, so it's zero. And the number of zeros is one. So the delay is minus one, that is to say, this system answers in advance, which means uh, it has a negative delay. It's not causal, okay? Has more zeros than poles, okay? But what we are doing is just a mathematical trick. We are not really manipulating the system. We are just doing a mathematical trick. Okay, so there is no problem that this is uh, non-causal for what we are going to do. Now, we have here x1, which is defined as uh, this transfer function without zeros times u. And we have y, which is this transfer function times x1. So y is b1 x1 plus b0 x2. Remember that x2 is x1 of k plus 1 uh, and b0 z x1 of x1. So in time, it gives me x2. Okay, so uh, what can we say? We can write the state model for X as before, the, the dynamic part. So this equation in terms of A and B are the same, but this equation is now is no longer true because the output is now replaced by this. And I haven't written it because I usually write it on the B1, B0 and zero. Don't forget that X3, okay? So when we have systems with zeros, you break it into two parts, okay? one part without zeros, and you define the first state variable as this intermediate variable, and another part with just with zeros. The first part is business as before, okay? So you define the state variables x1 of k, x2 of x1 of k, sorry, x1 of k, x1 of k plus one, and xk of x1 of k plus two, so the advancements of x1. And now this only affects the so-called output equation, okay? Now, uh, you, have to, you have to learn how to do this because it's important from thinking about the, the system. But MATLAB has a number of functions to manipulate and to create state models. For instance, state space to transfer function transfer, transforms a state space model to a transfer function model. Okay? Not exactly the method that I gave you, there is no. TF2 state space transforms a, a transfer function model to a state space model, which is another realization. So the state is not the one that we have, not necessarily the one that we have, okay? So uh, one, uh, one way that you can uh, do when you are studying this is to uh, solve your, solve your, your obtain your, uh, or solve your problem using pencil and paper, and then use these functions to check your result, okay? Then there are other, other functions like TF that defines the system by its transfer function. There are a number of other functions that you can, if you go and do doc of these functions, then you, you learn a lot of things from the MATLAB and its toolboxes, the control systems toolbox in particular. Okay? So, questions? No questions? So, we stop here. Now you know how to uh, co convert the two representations of models that we have learned, and we will continue next uh, week.